go on my Facebook page, which has lots of followers, you'll see a great picture I took recently in visiting the holy city of Waterbury. You know the very distinctive train station you see from the Mixmaster Highway mess that's crumbling there? Um, it's beautiful. But in front of that, there's a marvelous picture of Father Michael McGivney, the founder of the Knights of Columbus, and one of Waterbury's own. Waterbury's also known for Rosalind Russell, the Jimmy Pearsall, the crazy Red Sox uh, player that used to climb the backstop and hang upside down, the Mad Bomber, of course, who destroyed uh, train terminals. He had some issues. It's the city of uh, politicians and priests and several mayors who are in jail now. <laughs> but I call it home. This picture of Michael McGivney, I took as a snapshot, and it looks up in this great picture of priests in cassock, and he's waving, potioning towards the future. He gave a future for Catholics in the state of Connecticut. And now around the world, Knights of Columbus number two million? Incredible. He gave people an opportunity when the dominant group in charge of everything wouldn't give them a chance. It was the time of the signs no Irish need apply. Today, Catholics indeed have made it. You made it to church this morning. We've made it so much so that as a socioeconomic group, we pale in comparison to non-except American Jews. Very successful group. But we didn't start out that way. Today, remember in our intentions the deceased members of the Knights of Columbus who helped people to gain a life, to answer that American pursuit of happiness. Here we are in the midst of Lent, working out our salvation. It's an offer made by Jesus Christ, but we can respond or just ignore it. As anything in life, you don't apply yourself to it, you will see no success. So you have to engage the profound questions of life. It's so wonderful to have the young readers here because when a young reader comes forward and speaks beautifully and eloquently, we listen attentively because it sounds like a fresh word, even though we've heard it before. Tale as old as time, the gospel story of love and of loss. This tale as old as time confronts every family at one point or another. What do we do in the face of loss? The Catholic came to me one time and said last year they were invited out on Good Friday of all days to join friends for a dinner. Well, we're not really comfortable. Don't be a spoiled sport. Come on. Come out. It's a Friday after all. So they went, and they came in and they were scandalized. They said, Father, it doesn't matter to anyone. Jesus doesn't matter to anyone. And I wonder if it even matters to people that call themselves Catholic. It all falls apart if we don't pay attention. And I don't mean just church buildings. I mean personal lives. The work of the Knight of Columbus is to make sure the faith does not fall apart, to reach out to those that are in need, to include the social, the fraternity, to include service, to include learning about the faith, and of course to include worship. Does your faith matter to you? You can have a membership at the gym and be in terrible shape and never go. You can be baptized and never pray at home. But what does faith help us to do? Does it even matter? Is it just simply something we do at Christmas and Easter or Ash Wednesday? Is it simply a rite of passage? Many times people will call and say, our family's gone there for years. Translated, we haven't gone there in years. This is the last place we remember going to church. The church indeed is in crisis, but church is always in crisis. South Windsor was proactive and said, let's put the parishes together so we can preserve communities and grow a community, not simply maintain. 
This morning I slept through the early Mass, which is a horrible feeling, but why? Because after having finished Taste of East Catholic last night, I got a phone call that someone needed the sacrament of the sick. They were dying. Right? I jump in my car, Saturday night, it's about 10 o'clock. I said, okay, give me the hospitals at Manchester, is it Hartford? No. It's Smilo Clinic in New Haven. They had called and nobody had picked up. So I drove from South Windsor to New Haven and then back again to give someone the last rites. There's a lot of things wrong with that, but I was happy to celebrate the sacrament of the family that evening. But does your faith matter to you? Indeed, the whole church will fall apart if no one shows up. After Easter, you'll see the announcement of the closure of some 80 to 100 churches in the archdiocese because no one shows up. And we can blame leadership, or we could blame membership, or we could do something about it. But people only do things at the last minute, we know that. I do that. You make a New Year's resolution, you go charging out right before your doctor's appointment. Look, you've lost a pound since last year. Incredible. Well, when do you pray? They did a study of people praying. Let me ask the boys and girls, did you pray today? Raise your hand, yes or no? One, two, three, four. Okay, they're the ones that are asleep, ask them. Okay, good. They surveyed Protestant Christians in America. They spend two minutes a day in prayer. Good for them. They surveyed American Catholics. One minute. Not too good, coach. Not too good. You don't grow in what you don't do. There are lots of things that aren't appealing about faith, primarily discipline, and I can find lots of excuses why not to practice my faith. Why? Because I've heard all the excuses. They're great excuses. I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm too busy, I'm too angry, I'm too hurt, I'm too happy, I'm too busy, I'm... I'm here because of God. You're here because of God. To watch the news, which is growing increasingly secular, you think the world was run by either Rachel Maddow or Bill O'Reilly. It's not, and that's today's good news. <laughs> the Knights of Columbus remind us again and, and again that faith matters in our lives. It's not an antique for our grandparents. It's not something for a holy person to do for us. I'm no saint. I'm not. But I'd like to be. And how will I get there? By seeing your good example. Every day I'm inspired by the works of the Knights of Columbus, by the parishioners of this town, by the residents of this town. There are good people here. And that is God's grace at work. But we could all be better. We could all work harder. In the gospel it says Jesus wept. He's weeping for Lazarus. But we have to ask ourselves, is Jesus weeping for us? Because of our sins? Or because of our sorrows? I think both. The church calls herself an expert in humanity. And sometimes, many times, organizations like the Knights of Columbus help us to grow our faith. It doesn't grow on its own. We have the grace and everything we need there. You're going to receive communion. You've heard the gospel. You've seen these wonderful people around you. You've heard the children proclaim the word. It doesn't get much better. We don't have this at Dave and Buster's. They don't offer the meaning of life. They don't offer it on streaming internet. It's not offered on cable. But with a Catholic imagination, every activity that you already value becomes more meaningful. Your involvement in sports becomes more meaningful. You say, this being together, this team, this coaching is a lot like what? Our friendship with the saints. 
We go to the experts, we go for advice, and we're joined together. We're connected, not just our own families, but neighbors, strangers, and even enemies. So here's a suggestion. Make your plans for Holy Week and make the priority worship because worship changes us. Worship is our workout, if you will. Palm Sunday. We begin Passion Tide today. You see the statues are covered in purple because the church says focus, focus on the Lord Jesus. Palm Sunday, you'll get the palms. You'll listen to the Passion. And you'll play with the palms and make little crosses and hit your brothers and sisters with a palm. It's great fun. And the first question we asked in our culture, how long is it? How long is it? Never mind how long is it. When you have a good time, you never say, how long is this wedding reception going to go on for? How long is my birthday party going to last? You never ask that when you're having a good time. Worship is supposed to be a time for goodness. A time for you to be the best version of yourself. A time like the Knights of Columbus when they sit there and say, these are our ideals and I may be tired and bothered, angry and busy, but you know, those are still my ideals. So plan to be here on Palm Sunday. And then during Holy Week, Holy Thursday, I have to get down and wash people's feet. I never wanted to be a podiatrist. <laughs> but Jesus did it. So I'm imitating Jesus, and it's humbling, and indeed, it's moving. One year, I said to the children, pick out someone whose feet I need to wash. And they chose a little boy who was born without legs or arms. That was humbling. So come Holy Thursday and reflect on the blessed sacrament that you'll receive today. It means so much. It means you need to spend more than a minute a day thinking about the meaning of life. Come Good Friday at 3 or in the evening for the stations. It's very moving. Come to the Easter Vigil. If anything, just come to the beginning. We're having it at St. Margaret Mary's and we have a bonfire. Everyone has a little bit of arson in their lives. <laughs> It's a huge bonfire. Our, our deacon, Michael Haynes, nearly caught fire last year. I promise you it's a great time, except for the deacon. But we'll bring the candidate and catechumens we see at the church today, and they'll become like you, practicing Catholics. And that's a long mass. But think, if you've only done a minute a day in prayer throughout the year, what can you give to God this Easter who rose from the dead? Tale as old as time. Love and loss and with Jesus, fullness of life. <laughs>